Welcome to my next video on green chemistry. The greenhouse effect. Electromagnetic waves from the sun reach the earth where they're absorbed, heating the earth, and then some are re-emitted as infrared radiation is heat. They come into contact with gases which absorb them and re-emit them in all directions, often bouncing back at the earth which yet again heats it further. Greenhouse gases, three main ones, um, water vapour, carbon dioxide and methane. Now, when they absorb infrared radiation, these bonds will vibrate. This emits energy which can reach the Earth's surface. The bonds that emit them is OH in H2O, CO in CO2 and the CH in methane. The contribution of any particular gas to the greenhouse effect depends on how much radiation one molecule of gas absorbs, how much of the gas there is in the atmosphere, so concentration, and the residence time, so how long it's up there for. For example, water vapor's up there for a very long time, longer than others. But Or another one is that um, methane traps more heat than carbon dioxide does, but there's less methane in the atmosphere. So they all have their own effect. Preventing climate change. Increased number of greenhouse gases contributes to global warming. I mean, we can all see that you know that ice sheets are melting, tropical areas experience more frequent and destructive weather and floods. There's a lot more extremes of weather. So, what can we do to stop this? Right. Well, reducing greenhouse emissions. In 1997, over 100 countries signed the Kyoto Protocol. This was reducing emissions of six greenhouse gases by 5%. So some, some countries, though, like America, surprise, surprise, refused to sign. So that's one thing. Reduce emissions going in. Now, the EU are, have created strategies. They've got a few deals they want to at least 20% of the energy used in the EU to come from renewable sources, 10% of the fuels in transport will be biofuels, and EU greenhouse gas emissions will be reduced by 20%. So the EU also agreed to further reduce greenhouse gas by 30% if nations including the US, Russia, China and India follow this bold lead because obviously they are some of the biggest producers. Also, we need cleaner cars. They produce a lot of CO2. I mean, we've already got catalytic converters, which help, but we need to produce less carbon dioxide, so we need green cars. We've got you know these electrical cars are coming into play now. We need to use alternative fuels, wind turbines, tidal power, solar power, nuclear plants, instead of using coal, oil, and natural gas, which are not renewable. Also, a lot of processes use or produce carbon dioxide, which is bad, so we need to get rid of it. So there's carbon capture and storage. And there are three main things we can do once carbon is being produced. Pump CO2 under the sea, or store it in oil fields and gas fields, or turn it into metal carbonate. So if you've got um, something like barium oxide, magnesium oxide, and add carbon dioxide to them, you get a carbonate which can be used. So, the ozone layer, O3, is always being formed and broken down by UV radiation constantly. There are three types of UV radiation you need to know about. Well, yeah, UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA, 320 to 400 nanometers in wavelength. This always reaches the Earth, but since it's got the longest wavelength, it's got the shortest frequency, so less energy. UVB, which is 280 to 320 nanometers, medium energy. This particularly causes sunburn. Some of it is blocked out by the ozone layer, but some gets through. This can be particularly dangerous as it can cause skin cancer. And UVC, this is completely screened out by the ozone layer and it's 200 to 280 nanometers. And it is good it's screened out because it's the most dangerous. So we need the ozone layer particularly because if we get a decrease in ozone layer, then more UVB could come in, so more skin cancer, and UVC could come in, which would be very dangerous indeed. So formation of ozone. O2 and any UV light which is less than 240 nanometers will form two single oxygen molecules. These oxygen molecules will then react with oxygen itself to become O3 or ozone. And the opposite of ozone comes into contact with ultraviolet light, which is smaller than 310 nanometers, it'll form O2 and O. 
So you get an equilibrium reaction of O2 plus O becomes O3. Also, when O2 plus O becomes O3, it also releases heat. In this way, the chemical energy released is converted into kinetic energy. The overall effect is to convert penetrating UV radiation into heat without any net loss of ozone. So that's how it helps. And if you watched the halogeno alkane video, you'll remember this stuff on radicals. If you release CFCs into the atmosphere, they'll break down. You then get chlorine radicals. It's also the same though if you get um, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide going into the atmosphere. These can break down into radicals too. And what you get, you get these equations. Cl radical plus O3 becomes ClO radical plus O2. ClO radical plus O becomes Cl radical plus O2. And it's continually going on. And same, we just replace Cl with NO. Now, what this means is the overall reaction is O3 plus O becomes 2O2. Why this is bad? Because it's reducing the amount of ozone levels, which means more dangerous energy and heat will be getting into the planet's surface. Next, the catalytic converter. The internal combustion engine of cars produces carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen trioxide, and unburnt hydrocarbons. Now, what do these do? Carbon monoxide is poisonous, so we don't want that. And they exist for about a month before they're oxidised to carbon dioxide, but that's quite long. They're odourless, colourless, so you can't detect them easily. And obviously they can react with the haemoglobin in your blood to form carboxyl haemoglobin. It's a permanent reaction, so you lose your oxygen-carrying affinity. Oxides of nitrogen. Now these can form acid rain by reacting with the water in water vapor in clouds which can then damage the ecosystems by destroying plants also they can um nitrogen dioxide can end up being turned into ozone now while ozone is good in the atmospheric level at ground level it is toxic and dangerous so you don't want that and unburnt hydrocarbons um these, these can also react with nitrogen dioxide to form low-level ozone, so that's not good. And generally, they can be just bad for the environment. And if you end up burning them, they can produce toxic gases. So, two of, two of these in particular, carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide, form in cars, in car engines. You have nitrogen from the atmosphere react being burnt, so you get nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide is formed when it's incomplete combustion. So, what happens in the catalytic converter? It is a catalyst, it speeds up a reaction. So you have nitrogen, nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide become nitrogen plus carbon dioxide. Now these two are not toxic, They're still not great for the environment. Well, nitrogen is fine, but carbon dioxide isn't, but you still don't want them. So, nitrogen oxide and carbon monoxide are adsorbed, not absorbed, adsorbed onto the surface of the catalytic converter. Their bonds are weakened as the activation energy is lowered, producing radicals. These react with each other, forming N2 and CO2, and then they desorb from the surface and are released in the exhaust. And that is all you really need to know. There's a few more stuff on uh, sustainability, which is why we do recycling, atom economy, but that's all in earlier chapters as well, and also on uses of CO2, there's stuff like foam, solvents, decaffeinated coffee, using fizzy drinks, beer, dry cleaning, toxic waste treatment and chemical synthesis. So it has many uses but they very rarely come up in past in exam papers. So conclusion, all you really need to know is about the greenhouse gases, three main ones, water vapour, carbon dioxide and methane, ozone which is very important to helping the planet contain um, maintain a stable temperature and this is at the troposphere um, you do not want it at low levels and catalytic converters which convert toxic gases into less toxic ones so thank you for watching i hope this makes sense this is basically all you need to know for this topic there'll be 10 marks on it three of them will almost certainly be the catalytic converter maybe even four you'll almost certainly get the ozone question as well and there you've already got seven marks and you'll get one on something to do with greenhouse gases and that's all you'll get on it so thanks for watching and goodbye.